This could be the next boba. Thank you, Hokey, for keeping this alive. Pickle garlic, a little chili oil. Nishiga mixologist, ma. Nishiga mixologist. That was good. If you've seen any of our videos, you know that the 626 is a food haven. And since we're back in LA for a quick trip, we have to eat at every new restaurant that has opened in the past year. Authentic Hue Vietnamese, yogurt as the new boba, Hawaiian Cambodian grilled shrimp, and a place that's recreating Chinese McDonald's? It's gonna be epic, but first, we gotta go see an old friend. All right, everybody, I gotta give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Crowd Cow. They are an online marketplace for high quality meat such as beef, pork, chicken. They come vacuum packed and delivered straight to your door and it's all ethically farmed. This is all sustainable packaging. Your order is 100% carbon neutral. Basically what you're gonna do, you're gonna go on the website, you're gonna choose all the meats that you want and then you're gonna choose your schedule on when you want it to arrive and then it's gonna come to your door frozen at the peak freshness. Crowd Cow meats are super, super high quality and better tasting than a lot of the stuff you're gonna find at the grocery grocery store, but you know what? I gotta go find out for myself. So I'm about to go hit the grill. Ooh, got some chicken here, a little bit burnt on this one. All right, but that's not crowd cow's fault, that's me. I wish I had longer tongues. Ah. So if you join the herd today, you can be a member for free and you can save 5% off of orders over $99. Plus they got a crazy selection. You can go on their website and you have access to a whole bunch of cuts of meats that even the grocery store is not gonna have. When you're working with high quality meats like the ones you find on Crowd Cow, it's easy. And if you click on our link down below right now, crowdcow.com slash fungros, you can get $15 off of your first order and free membership. And if that's not enough, Crowd Cow is actually throwing in free items with a lot of the orders right now. So now is a good time to be part of the herd. All right, yo guys, we are back in the 626 Welcome right down. here. And we are going to embark on a new 626 food crawl, meaning that we're gonna check out all the new concepts that have opened up in the past year, year and a half. Nice. But of course, starting off, we've gotta start off here at Bofo Cafe. Yeah. You guys always are what? Reinventing your menu? Yeah, we got, we got seasonal items all the time because we use you know real ingredients, so we have to like gotta keep things fresh, you know? All right, so what are we looking at real quick to, right. you know, to start off our journey? So to start things off, you guys gotta try this watermelon oat milk. So it's real watermelon juice that we cold press in-house, pure, fresh with a little splash of oat milk on there as well. It's a really, really special because a lot of places they do watermelon drinks, but they blend it. So it gets cut with ice and everything, but this is pure watermelon. This is our mighty Thai tea. So it's basically our Thai tea with espresso. All right, this is our summer blossom. So this is a real lychee juice, real pear juice with green tea. A lot of places use like pumps of syrup for lychee flavors or for whatever flavors. So this is lychee pear. This is lychee pear green tea, yeah. This is our crimson smash, it's blood orange syrup. Same thing, we make our a real blood orange syrup in-house with blood oranges. We have a limeade that we also make in-house and guava nectar, it's all in here. Mix that up too. Look at that color change, all right. Fresh watermelon juice. That's the that's summer right there. We only have this during the summertime. This is a 10 out of 10, yeah, 11 yeah. out of 10. <laughs> Please, you guys, come to Bopo Mofo, Bopo Mofo. Bopo Mofo. Phil, if nothing else, is a cultural void filler. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's their, their words. We are we are looking to expand right now. We haven't really told a lot of people yet, but there's a second store that's in the works. Haven't well, announced where it is yet. But, if people uh, want to invest with you guys, <laughs> where, where should they email? DM us or something, I guess. Cool. All right, Phil. Hey, dude, thank you so much. Welcome back, guys. You guys know that as we go on these food crawls, our intention is not just to eat tasty foods, but to also talk about just the societal trends or community trends that kind of inform these food changes. Behind me is Five Stars Way. Now, a lot of the people who work here just moved here from Vietnam like five, six years ago. So they are bringing regional, authentic cuisines. They do not even serve pho here. They only are serving bumble hue, mi quang, bun riu, and obviously dishes like nem loi. Me and Andrew have never even had this before. So you gotta appreciate what every immigration wave of Asian brings new to the table. So let's check it out. All the dishes is from here, guys. It's Pai So Hai, Elon Valley, Garfield, Hambra. Guys, I never thought that I would be having dishes that I've only had one time or never before in my life in the 626 because typically in the Chinese zone, you would say that the Viet food is kind of like surface level, but I do think there's a lot more Viet's from Vietnam moving here in more recent years. And like we said, they're bringing regional stuff. I never even had this before, so I'm excited to have it. It tastes sort of like a more Viet version of Korean barbecue when you get your own rice wraps at Korean barbecue and you mix it with, you know, all the different panchans and the bulgogi. That is what it tastes like. We've got the nem loi. This is a really cool dish. Never had this before in my life. Let's get into it. He said that there's some rice paper here from Hue. They brought it in 
straight off the boat. So typically with rice paper, they're gonna give you that little like plastic, like half circle thing to like dip it in. But he said this one is designed to work with strictly just veggies on here. All right, now I know some people like to leave it, you know, with the stems, some people like to peel the leaves. I'm just gonna, you know, be lazy today for the sake of speed. Boom, I got my pork, I've been dipping it. I'm just gonna pull the pork out. Mm. Nemloy. This is really, really difficult to describe with the dry rice paper, but it's actually pretty good. Regional delicacies from the Hue region. That's the middle part of Vietnam. What the hell? I can't even explain it. Yo, this is super good. My goodness. So far, this was the best thing I had. All right, so our next spot on our 626 new concept food crawl is a spot that is in an unassuming plaza. It's a ghost kitchen, and they are bringing that famous North Shore Hawaiian shrimp to the 626. Man, for all y'all who have never been to Hawaii, Giovanni shrimp is one of the most popular shrimps in the North Shore. And, you know, a lot of people try to emulate that here in LA, but I think this place is probably the closest to it. They are going viral in the foodie circles. And the one twist for this shrimp is they're not trying to copy like just Giovanni's shrimp truck. They got Cambodian flavors infused in the shrimp. Wow, that's crazy. I'm really looking forward to it, man. Cambodian Hawaiian shrimp. Let's go. All right, we are here with the owner and chef Mara. You're of a Cambodian background. Can you tell us what is going on with your shrimp right now? So I started back in like October and like I got laid off. I was like from tech. I was actually a recruiter. I'm not from the industry. I like just miss like family and going on vacation because we're all like locked up in COVID. So but one dish that I missed was Giovanni shrimp. So I reinvented it at home. But then I added some like Cambodian flares at the end to have like, you know, some like umami earthy tones. When I first started, I was using shrimp heads. That was taking me a little much time, but then, so that was like, oh, shrimp paste. I use it every day. So I put that and then I put fish sauce and that's what really elevated the taste. Right here, we have a whole shrimp extravaganza right here at Che's Kitchen. I mean, you're talking about Hawaiian style shrimp with Cambodian flavors infused. Here we have the medium. This is spicy. It has some extra chili pepper flakes on top, as you can see. And I got the little lobster tail right there. Lobster. Garlic rice, of course. If you guys are familiar at all with the Nam Pong, it is the Cambodian sandwich, you know, kind of like the equivalent to the bun mi. And here you have an egg on top of the medium shrimp. Wow, 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 wow. Cambodian Hawaiian shrimp shell on. That's a big juicy golf prawn right there. Ooh. Wow. First off, I like how buttery it is. It's gum buttery, but uh, I really like the Cambodian spice that they put on it, you know, the chili paste. Mm -hmm. It really differentiates that from, you know, like a Hawaiian style, like right. Giovanni's. Okay, coming over to the Nam Pang, the Cambodian sandwich right here. Let me just chop this up real quick. Well, that is definitely one of the best shrimp sandwiches mm. I've had in a very, very long time. The coleslaw is a little spicy, balances out with the shrimp. The bread's soft, egg is right there, you know, neutralizing and bringing everything together. That was delicious. It's just so cool to get these ghost kitchens popping up. You know, these are people who didn't necessarily work in the restaurant industry, but they saw an opportunity during COVID and they're just cooking and putting all this love and care into these recipes. And sometimes you get the best deal. You just don't get a storefront. That's it. Man, I'm just glad that, you know, we're seeing a lot more shrimp spots here in the mainland, especially in the 626. And the West Coast does have a lot of Hawaiian influence. So shout out to Chia's Kitchen. I love how she's fusing Kamai flavors into the shrimp here. And man, overall, you guys gotta check it out. All right, you guys, the next spot on our 626 investigative food trend crawl is meat chin noodle. I'm very excited to share the Chinese name. I'm gonna take a stab at it. Ching Mian Fang. Ching is for the Qing Dynasty, also abbreviation for Shan Shi. Mian is for noodles, Fang is for factory, so that's where you get the name from. Nell, you were playing pro ball in Asia. You have been to Shan Shi. I've been to Shan Shi, man. The type of food that it had there was mind blowing. This is gonna be some spicy stuff. And you know what's interesting is on the East Coast and in New York, City, they've had Xi'an famous foods, which kind of made Xi'an food very accessible for very long. But this is the first time I've seen somebody try to do that for the West Coast. Yeah. In the 626, they've always had Shanxi, like Xi'an food, yeah. but it was like really deep in St. Gabriel. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. almost everybody who went there was from China, no ABCs. No, the for it to be here on Main Street. Main Street is mainstream. So the question yeah. is, is Xi'an food getting mainstream in 626 now? It's been mainstream a little bit in New York, but can Xi'an food become mainstream on the West Coast and commercialize? Let's check it out. All right, you guys, this is round one at Michin Noodle. So as you can see here, we've got cilantro on top, 
You got green onions. So David, what's really special about this bowl of noodles, man? All right, so the really thing that's special is the carb or the noodle is actually a ripped up pita, and that's the uh, palmore. Some people speculate that there's a lot of like Middle Eastern influence in this dish because Xi'an was the landing place of the Silk Road. Here we got the three-in-one belt noodles. They call them belt noodles because they look like belts, and these are the noodles that he had to slap, you know, so you're hearing that. All right, you guys, authentic Xi'an food round one. I've got the Yang Rou Pao Mua. I got the Biang Biang noodles. What size belt is that? Size what, 32? All right, I just tried the Biang Biang Mian. It kind of tastes like, like a nice uh, pasta. Mm. This is the Yang Rou Pao Mua. That tastes the most different out of everything. I, I, per, I personally prefer the yum yum yum, but the yang rou pao more tastes different. Yo, I am interested to see, David, if people on Main Street come to like the yang rou pao more. Because it's actually really easy to eat. It does no offensive flavors. It's actually not that strong, but it's just the form factor is a little bit weird. Okay, round two here at Meat Chin Noodle. We've got the Chi Shan Noodle, AKA the Chi Shan Mian. And here I have this very tasty looking Shan Shi Chao Fan, AKA the Shan Chi fried rice. So I'm pretty excited to try this Chi Shan one. It's got potatoes, it's got carrots in it. Um, obviously, I'm not fully sure what to expect on a flavor profile level. Examining the fried rice here, obviously it has some different elements. It's got the big chunk of jalapeno in there. It actually has the wood ear mushroom, which is a common theme at this restaurant, and I'm not mad. And also you can tell by the color of the fried rice, it is a little spicy. Chi Shan Mian. Shan Chi fried rice. I would say that the Chi Shan Mian it's pretty medicinal, pretty clean, but uh, definitely doesn't really have that like fatty, luxurious vibe that the lamb or the biang biang mian had. This is exactly what I thought it tastes like, and it is so good. There's pieces of potato in there, there's little bits of pork, there's spiciness. This is one of the best fried rices I've had in a long time because let's be honest, a lot of spots when they serve fried rice, it's just like a whatever dish. It's like a side filler dish, but this one, this got the flavor. Of course, you guys, we have the roja moa. It still has the same moa, which is the pita, that you could break that up, turn it into sort of noodle, or you can eat it. That's a, a pork, and I have a cumin lamb over here. David, would you say this is the closest thing that Chinese people have to a traditional hamburger? You can see the oil and the juices from the fat is seeping into the bread right here. That's what I like to see. That's how you know the meat is juicy. For a plain, traditional roja moa, that is really good. It was juicy and everything, got lots of flavor. I'm gonna add a little pickled garlic, and then I'll add a little chili oil. Oh, you talking about from the Yang Rou Pao Mua. <laughs> Don't play with me. Hey, enter. Nishiga Mixologist Ma. Nishiga Mixologist Ma. Nishiga Mixologist so will Xi'an food get as popular in LA as it will in New York? I, I doubt it just because in New York there's such a heavy Middle Eastern influence and there's a lot of halal food and there's a lot more reference for that type of flavors. But I think this spot's gonna be successful. And these are my two favorite dishes. Come here and get the fried rice and the Yang Rou Pao Living in China for like a year and a half, you know, I traveled to a lot of cities where I would never imagine. And trying some of those foods just really blew my mind. And it really opened up a lot of doors for me to you know, eat this more you know, frequently. And uh, I think what I really like about it is the spice, man. The spice. I don't know, there's a lot of you know, spicy foods, especially in like you know, China. But this one's probably my favorite. One. So, so you say you like Xi'an spice even more than Sichuan spice? Yes, for sure. The spice here, it's just tasty. I, I'm gonna go, you know, as far as my favorite goes, I'm going with the Biang Biang. That's my, I love that dish. It tastes like pasta. <laughs> Guys, if you come to, if you're in SF, go to Terracotta. If you're in 626, come to meet Chin Noodle. You will not be disappointed. On to the next spot. Andrew, this may be one of the most interesting spots that we're gonna hit on this 626 food crawl new for 2021. You know, one of the things that we always miss about our trips to China, particularly Shanghai, is that McSpicy sandwich from McDonald's China. And look at that vision right now. This is gold. Can we do a, do a selfie real quick? This is, this is big. It's actually so famous around Asia, they call it in Seoul, Korea, the Shanghai McSpicy. Yeah. So like somehow the chef in Shanghai McDonald's just came up with some the craziest okay. chicken sandwich you've ever had in your so, life. So, so how does that relate to this spot right here behind us? Ace Burger is two guys from Shanghai and they decided to bring the chicken sandwiches from McDonald's Shanghai and KFC Shanghai and recreate them in America. Crazy. Let's check it out. All right, everybody, I'm here at Ace Burger. This is the recreation of the Chinese McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich. This is one of my favorite fast food sandwiches in the world. And now they're here at Ace Burgers trying to recreate it. I gotta take a bite and tell you what I think. Let's see if it takes me back to Shanghai. 
It is kind of taking me back to Shanghai. It's kind of like it. It is really juicy. It's chicken thigh. It's spicy on the inside. Wow. Does it taste like the Chinese McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich? I would give it an 8.5 out of 10 on the mimic scale. That is actually really good. In fact, it might be bigger. The bun is a little bit more crumbly. I think obviously McDonald's, they have their own buns, but taste wise, it's pretty close, man. If you ever want to know what that Chinese McDonald's chicken sandwich tastes like, you might have to come to Ace Burgers and try it out. It's a pretty close one. Here are the interpretations of the KFC wings in China. So this is kind of like your New Orleans style, kind of like this weird kind of red texture. I know in America, I don't think they would make wings that look like this. They'd probably have to make it redder. And then here you have your fried chicken wings. Let's try it out. This is the New Orleans style wing. Little peppery kick, kind of sweet. Does kind of taste like some of those braised soy sauce chicken wings. I would say overall, this is not bad. I'd give this a 3.5 out of five. All right, so what do you guys think about kind of the Chinese McDonald's or Chinese fast food being its own genre in America? Because for many, many years, people would go over to China and say, oh, I like the McDonald's and KFC better out there. How come they don't bring any of those recipes to America? Well, guess what? It's not KFC or McDonald's that's gonna bring those recipes. It's actually people like these who are gonna recreate them. Man, between the New Orleans wing and the crispy chicken sandwich from McDonald's here, I would say you guys gotta go check it out at Ace Burgers, but this is a really, really interesting concept. All right, you guys, we are checking out all the new concepts in the 626. Of course, there's some evolution even to pre-existing concepts. The Nashville hot chicken sandwich has sort of taken all these crazy turns. Now we're throwing mac and cheese in them. Well, I think actually the 626, whether it's the mixture of Asian people and Latino people, they actually love the chicken sandwich because Asians are gonna love it and then Latinos are too. So everybody, it's got a market out here. This has mac and cheese on it. This is called the Mac Daddy. Jaybird, they pride themselves on building in that flavor into the chicken before even the spices come in. Mac and cheese on your chicken sandwich. I would say it's pretty good. Mm. Pretty good. It yeah. added a different texture yeah. and also the cheese flavor. I mean, I also like the chicken sandwich traditional, you know, with more of the coleslaw and stuff like that. I think that's how I usually imagine it, but that's pretty good. Chicken was high quality, it was super juicy, yeah, had the good. brioche bun, very chicken soft. Jaybirds, if you're at the mall and you like the chicken sandwich, definitely get it. All right, next we are trying their very spicy chicken and waffles, but they do it a little differently. And they put it on toast, which is very Southern. Okay, I seen this toast when I was at those Texas barbecues. And then they put them on these little circular waffles right here. Right. Jaybird chicken and waffles. Uh, spicy style, guys, man. No, you gotta take the other bite of this, man. I've never had my chicken and waffles this spicy before. I like it. They got the I like line. this. I wasn't too big a fan of the mac and cheese one, but their chicken and waffles, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a four out of five. Really, really enjoyed the waffle. The waffle. That waffle was soft and fluffy. The waffle was, was a five out of it five. It was exactly how it was supposed to be. Man, wipe, wipe your mouth, man. <laughs> As far as these different Nashville chicken sandwich concepts coming up, and you know, it started with Howlin' Rays, now there's like 30 of them. Which ones are you guys like leaning towards? The classic versions or some of these wacky versions? I usually don't say this very often, but I like the traditional style, the Nashville hot chicken sandwich. They also have it here at Jaybirds, but I think the spicy chicken and waffles is the way to go. All right, you guys, we are with the elusive Yomi's yogurt with rice in it. This is their signature item. I think their second one was this mango pomelo. Then we've got a dragon fruit one over here. And of course we've got a, like an energy grain one. Like it's not even rice in there, it's energy grain. Now, before you think that this is a weird drink, I mean, through a lot of cultures, there is such thing as like rice puddings and rice yogurt. So they're just putting it in drink form. This could be the next boba. Yomi's, Yomi's yogurt. yogurt. Okay, that's blending two things I really like is that kind of Beijing yogurt flavor that I eat after hot pot mixed in with purple rice. I like it, bro. It kind of reminds me of this Indian dish called kheer, which is like this rice pudding. I feel like this is what old people would drink. Wow, like me though. What are they selling? Hot take, hot take. I take Big it over boulder. I take it over boulder. Whoa, wow. whoa. Oh, wow. But, but, but specifically wow. this one, the mango pomelo. Whoa, you David. No, the mango pomelo. David, you going to she's gonna say something crazy like that because I was asking if this is the next boba and you basically just said in your personal life it is. Hey, a lot of us ate Yo Play yogurt growing up, Chobani, Beijing yogurt, Beijing Swan Nai. This yogurt could be the next boba. Last but not least, as far as the mall goes, guys, we have Noodle Street. Now this is a concept that meant to mainstreamize a lot of uh, more obscure foods like the Neuro Dream being here, which ah. actually was somewhat invented in California, I believe. Yeah. All the elements are traditional, obviously, with the scallion pancake and the beef, but the whole wrapping, burrito of it, I believe it was done in America. 
Yeah. That's what the legend is. Anyways, this next dish is crazy to see this in the mall because David, this is big plate chicken. This is one of your favorite dishes. This is Dapanji. And usually this comes on a humongous plate. It's like $35 at least. Dapanji at the mall, Neuro Jimbing at the mall. Who would have thought? Neuro Jimbing. It's not the greatest one I've had, but for the mall, very solid. I give it a four out of five. Well, you know. That's a high score. But solid. Yeah. Solid, I mean, like three out of five. How are you going to tell me what solid is? Solid, yeah. I come up with what solid uh, is. I would say solid is more 3.5. Yeah. Three, three. Okay, 3.75 from the Nero Dream Bing at right. the mall. We're gonna go with the Da Pan G here. Now, dude, a lot of people are not gonna think that you can recreate a good Da Pan G at the mall, at an American mall. Let me tell you this. It doesn't fully taste like it, but for the mall, it totally gets the job done. Let us know if you wish your hometown mall had all these traditional Asian foods. Is that something you'd be interested in? Let us know in the comment section below. And we'll make it happen, because I got pulled like that. Wow! Again, guys, we've got to give a big shout out to Ho Ki, which is the Cantonese empire, buying out old concepts and modernizing them. They actually bought out a old Chiu Jiao noodle shop. So Chiu Jiao people are people from Taozhou, China, who moved to Vietnam maybe like 50 to 100 years ago, created a new cuisine of food. They bought it out, revamped it, up the prices, up the quality. But you guys, I'm telling you, if you guys don't know about chiu jiao noodles, you're missing out. Aren't you guys, it is no secret that chiu jiao noodles are sort of disappearing because mostly the people that were cooking them were from an older generation, a lot of them were refugees from Vietnam or Cambodia. It's really interesting to see people buy up the concepts and modernize them to keep this style of noodle alive. And by the way, guys, this style of noodle is incredibly delicious. So here we have the chiu jiao cho min, which is a dry style of egg noodle. It's got a bunch of different flavorings in there. It is very subtle. Trust me, guys, this is probably one of the most underrated noodles on planet Earth. I have a little vinegar, soy sauce, chili flakes. Oh, and if you're feeling a little frisky, to be honest, you hit it with a tiny bit of fish sauce too. It's amazing. Thank you, Hokey, for keeping this alive. All right, you guys, this is not your regular satay cho mein because this has been hit in the wok. So this is actually a new thing I've never had before. This is satay beef noodles with egg noodles chow mein. Yeah, this, this does kind of taste like a Hong Kong style wet noodle, but it actually has way more flavor. You guys know a lot of the most flavorful Cantonese or Hong Kong dishes actually have some chiu jiao influence. There's a saying in chiu jiao, we're not chiu jiao, but it's ho chi po nan zai, which means ho sik mo yan zi, hao chi mei er yan zhi lao, which basically means it's really good, but nobody knows. And that is the whole thing about chiu jiao noodles, guys. You know, once this older generation of like Southeast Asian Chinese refugees as they, you know, retire and things like that. Who's gonna keep it alive? Guess what? Hoki is. Jump <laughs> All the women back here cooking food are actually Cambodian Chinese, so that means they actually speak Tao Zhou, aka Chiu Chao, they speak Cantonese, Mandarin, they speak Cambodian, they speak some English, and they also speak Thai. Within our conversation, not that I know all those languages, but I know how to say just some words and phrases. We were just able to kind of throw it around, so that was pretty cool. Man, this is so interesting. Different languages. Crazy. All right, you guys, our next spot on this 626 food crawl is Aaliyah Lava Land. And this is a, this story actually has a really crazy name. Now, we went in there, we talked to them real quick. What are they serving? They're serving Thai-style mooncakes. The owner is from Bangkok. I believe he's of Thai-Chinese descent. But it reminds me a little bit more of the Suzhou-style mooncake. Pop it up right here that looks like a pastry. Let's go in and check it out. Aliyah Lava Land. Wow! Man, talk to the people, man. So it's honestly like a gigantic Shaolong Bao. Like a giant. <laughs> Try one. Oh, oh man, the ooey gooey. This is good, yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Yo, straight up, the Aaliyah Lava Cakes, man. You guys are really hyping this up, man. You know I do not like these traditional Chinese cakes and moon cakes. I, I usually hate it because it's so dry, but it's it tricks you because it's flaky. But uh, anyways, Lava Land. Wow. Surprisingly good. Hey man, I like cream pie. All of it is locked in into this thick, flaky outer exterior. Shout out to them, they're doing some new things. Yo, Aaliyah Lava Lamb, five out of five. 
All right, you guys, I believe this is a little bit more based off the Suzo mooncake because that's who mostly went in Minnan region. That's, you know, Fuzo as well, Hokin. A lot of Hokin people went to Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand as well. So this is not a lava cake. This is not a lava cake. This is a mooncake now. Thai mooncake. Pretty good. Okay, mooncake uh, inside right here. It's actually really good. I mean, this is not the most traditional even of the Thai moon cake. They like flavored the in chai. Yeah. It reminds me of, you know, in Chinese, the local bang. You know, yeah. it's kind of dry, but still very flavorful. Overall, if you come to Aliyah Lava Lamb and get the lava cake, but I will say this, even these Thai moon cakes, it kind of reminds me of like Pad Siu versus like Gong Tao Ao Hall, like beef chow fun. Same root dish. There's a lot of Chinese in Thailand, but I'm not gonna lie. The Thai version usually has a little bit more of a Muay Thai bun. Next up on our investigative food crawl is a second generation owned business it just opened up in the past two years it's called mr obanyaki guess what they're serving obanyaki you know, they got the wheel cakes with ice cream inside of it you know they got some fillings they got all types of flavors but I think they got like a bolo pao like yeah they got all types of you know fusion because a lot of people stuff. they do like the donut ice cream sandwich mm -hmm. right but this is a bolo pao which is a pineapple chinese flavor. influence let's check it out guys yo i got the shovel with the monster cookie dough ice cream i got yeah, the custard the ice cream. cream into that thing no, have oh, you yeah. ever had? I mean, you spend a lot of time in Cantonese-speaking countries. I mean, well, or never places. have I had a bowl of bao ice cream sandwich. Oh, that's good. Straight up, I'll tell you this right now. This ice cream in this obanyaki wheel cake is good. I really like how fluffy the bowl of bao is, man. And the ice cream just delicious. Yo, I'm just really excited to see the Asian fused horchata drinks here. You know, in the 626. When I first moved here to America from China, you know, I went to Lincoln Heights. You know, I drank a lot of horchata. You know, growing up. But it's crazy to see Asian flavors now with it. Here I got the ube horchata and the matcha horchata. Definitely, you know, really authentic with the flavors. I, I think I like the matcha more. Not a big fan of ube, but still pretty good. What is the rule of three? Yeah, so the reason why I'm uh, eating this chicken and waffles is because the chicken have the busty breath. <laughs> 